Hello my legendary Dragonborn, this is Kato Genesis, and welcome to the Unique Equipment Guide for Dragonborn, the final expansion for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. For the gear that will be covered, I will show you what they are, what they do, and most importantly where to find them yourself, with some help from the Elder Scrolls Wiki. The items with quests attached, which is most of them, will be marked with a star. And so our adventure begins in Solstheim. When you first arrive in Ravenrock, and become familiar with the new town, before even stepping foot outside, you have access to a Nordic Pickaxe, the Bloodskull Blade, and Zakrisos. The Nordic Pickaxe is somewhat rare, and lets you mine Stalrim, a resource specific to Solstheim, and you can speak to Glover Mallory, the blacksmith of the area, to retrieve the pickaxe for yourself. As for the Bloodskull Blade, it is a two-handed blade with a base damage of 21, and unlike any other weapon in the game, a power attack with this sword will cause a shockwave that deals 30 damage to the enemies that it hits. As for Zakrisos, it is the first of four Dragon Priest masks you can obtain. A heavy armor mask with a base armor of 23, which increases your shock damage by 25% and resistance by 50%. To get these items, you must enter Ravenrock Mine across town. Inside, you will find Crescius Corellius arguing with his wife about traversing the mine at which point you can get Glover's pickaxe and start the quest The Final Descent, which takes you deeper into the mines and ultimately to the end of Bloodskull Barrow, which rewards you with the Bloodskull Blade, Zakrisos from the Dragon Priest there, and one of the several black books in this expansion. Back on the surface, if you choose to assist Glover even further, he will leave you the key to take the Black Guard's outfit, a unique set of Thieves' Guild armor. The Black Guard's hood has a base armor of 18, and makes prices at vendors 25% better. The chest gives 33 base armor, and increases carrying capacity by 50, the gloves have a base of 8, and make lockpicking 40% easier, and the boots have a base of 13, making pickpocket 40% better. To obtain this armor, you must join the Thieves' Guild in Skyrim first, and spoken to Tonilia, Delvin, and Vex before this quest is available. Speaking of the Thieves' Guild with Glover, he will ask you to retrieve his formula that was stolen by Esmond Tyne, and you will be sent to the Castle Karstag Caverns to retrieve it. Once you do, he gives you the key to his basement, where you will find the Black Guard's armor. The next unique piece of equipment is the Champion's Cudgel, an Imperial Warhammer of tenderizing design. This carries a base damage of 24 and the Chaos Enchantment, which has a 50% chance of dealing each element of fire, frost, and shock, the magnitude being determined by the player's level upon retrieval. You can disenchant this for the effect, but there are Nordic weapons and Stallroom weapons that you can find with this enchantment too, so if you intend to keep this in your collection, there's no reason you can't. This is wielded by General Carius in Fort Frostmoth, and after taking just a few steps south of Ravenrock, you will find Captain Veleth fighting off the Ash Spawn. Assist him and you can start the quest March of the Dead, which leads you to Fort Frostmoth and this Warhammer. A set of unique equipment that is more of an ordeal to obtain is Azadol's armor, the Dragon Priest mask of the same name, and Hoarfrost. Let's start with the armor though. Azadol's armor set is in the ancient Nordic style, and each piece has a unique enchantment. Azadol's Helm of Vision, for example, makes your Conjuration and Rune spells cost 25% more but they can be cast at a longer range. It also has a base armor of 19 instead of 15. Azadol's Armor of Retribution has a base armor of 40 instead of 25, and enemies who strike you when you have this armor equipped have a small chance of being paralyzed. Azadol's Gauntlets of Warding have a base armor of 14 instead of 10, and makes your ward magic 25% less effective, but lets you absorb 50% of the magicka from incoming spells. And Azadol's Boots of Waterwalking, also giving a base armor of 14, do exactly what they're for, they give you waterwalking. Wearing the full armor set will give you a plus 10 to your enchanting. Azadol's set also comes with a couple of rings. Azadol's Ring of Arcana, which when equipped gives you the Ignite and Freeze spells to use freely, and Azadol's Ring of Necromancy, that states when a minion you've reanimated takes damage, they will explode for 50 points of frost damage and die. Azadol's Mask, simply called Azadol, carries a similar enchantment to Zakrisos, but makes fire spells and resistances more potent instead. And finally, Hoarfrost, the ancient Nordic pickaxe, is carried by Rallus Sedaris. It does 15 points of frost damage on strike, and has a small chance of freezing your target solid. These 8 items I just mentioned are all in the same place, believe it or not, and that is Kolbjorn Barrow, a short distance southeast of Ravenrock. Speak to Rallus Sedaris, the only one there, and you can begin the quest unearthed when you choose to fund the excavation. When you do this every few in-game days, Rallus will send you a message via courier to return, clean out the Draugr, and to employ more workers. This will happen 4 times before Kolbjorn Barrow is fully accessible and will require 11,000 gold in total. By the end, you will face off with Azadol and Rallus by your choice, and be able to leave with the armor set, mask, and pickaxe. The third in the set of elemental masks is Dukan. Its base armor is identical at 23, and this gives a boost to your frost-based attacks by 25%, and resistance by 50%. Dukan is in White Ridge Barrow. It is in the northern mountains of Solstheim, and a quest is not required to get this mask. This is also where you are able to craft the Spider Scrolls, a way to thwart your enemies by throwing spiders at them. Next, for you archers, is the Glass Bow of the Stag Prince, a standard glass bow with a powerful enchantment. This makes the wielder more and more powerful for every 20 animals that are killed with the bow, 
At a maximum of 80 kills, your health and stamina will be boosted by 25 while this bow is equipped. The glass bow of the Stag Prince is sold by Phallus Sylvain. He is located at the Ramshackle Trading Post between the hours of 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. You cannot stand and wait for him like most other NPCs. You must arrive via fast travel or on foot between 12 and 6 for him to appear. Sometimes he has this bow equipped, so you may want to have the perfect touch, or to sell him a dagger, attack him and then sheath your weapon, and then he will equip the dagger instead, letting you purchase the bow. If you like dwarven armor or spewing hot steam at your enemies, you may want the Visage of Mazund. At a base armor rating of 24, the Visage is one of the two that has the highest base armor for a helmet in the game, the other being Konarik. Along with the added protection, this will increase your stamina by 60 points and give you the Breath of Nechuak ability, which deals 15 points of damage per second at the cost of stamina. You can find the Visage of Mazund in Falbathars, a Dwemer ruin in the mountains north of Ravenrock. Even if you do not wear heavy armor, this helmet is well worth retrieving. Be sure to grab the Resonance Gem next to it, because it helps us in getting the next unique item. The Dwarven Black Bow of Fate. It has a base damage of 13, which is equal to the Elven Bow, but it carries an enchantment similar to the Chaos Enchantment, retaining a 50% chance to absorb 25 points of health, stamina, and or magicka. On the luckiest of hits, you will absorb 25 points of all three, making this quite a formidable bow, regardless of its base damage. The Dwarven Black Bow of Fate is found in Kagrimez, a short distance south of Mirak's temple. There are three locked treasure rooms in this Dwemer ruin, and to access them all you need four resonance gems. Since you likely have the one from Falvathars already, find a vendor named Revis Sarvani, northwest of Telmithrin, and you can purchase another from him. Then, once you enter Kagrimez, you will find some reavers and two more on their leader. After having four of these gems, arrange them in the podium at the center to reflect that of the gate you are trying to unlock on the left. You will be sent through a gauntlet of Dwemer design, and after the third trial is completed, the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate is yours to receive. The next is the set of equipment of the legendary Pirate King, Hawknir Deathbrand. The Deathbrand armor is a unique set of Stalrim light armor, and the four-piece set carries a base armor of 78.5 before the full set bonus, which is a massive jump of 100 extra armor. To start the Deathbrand quest, you must be level 36 or higher. Starting with the Deathbrand helmet, when equipped, this will give you the ability to breathe underwater and is located in a chest in Hawknir's Shoal, which is north of the Windstone. Here you may also find a pirate captain who carries the Deathbrand treasure map. As for the next piece, the Deathbrand gauntlets are designed for those of you who like dual wielding, and says when dual wielding, for each piece of Deathbrand armor you wear, you get a 10% damage increase, 40% being the maximum. The gauntlets are located in a sinkhole south of Bristleback Cave, within yet another chest. The next piece is the Curus itself, which increases your stamina by 15 for each Deathbrand item you wear, maxing out at a 60 stamina bonus. This is found north of the Earthstone and west of Ravenrock, on the peninsula. And finally, the Deathbrand boots will increase your carrying capacity by 10 for each Deathbrand item equipped, maxing out at 40 extra carrying capacity. This chest is just southwest of Telmithrin, off the cliffs next to some dead reavers. And now that you have the full set, what's next? Blood Scythe and Soul Render. Both of these blades have a base damage of 13, and while wielded with the other, Soul Render will absorb 15 points of health and have a chance of lowering the target's armor, while Blood Scythe will absorb 15 points of magicka and have a chance to lower the target's magic defense. After getting the full set of Deathbrand, take the key you received with the last piece to Gildan Hole Barrow which is on an island east of Skull Village. After mining your way into the treasure room, you will be forced to proceed further to the resting place of Hawknir Deathbrand and his crew. By the time you leave, you will have Blood Scythe and Soul Render, and the quest for Deathbrand will be complete. Before going on any further, use this chance to get the Hork's Bane, a unique steel mace that carries a damage bonus of 20 against Horkers, and apparently this can be enchanted on top of its initial effect. On the same island of Gildenhole Barrow, called Horker Island, this is found on the corpse of someone named Satan, who may have had a personal vendetta against Horkers. What better way to continue the legend than using it on the Horkers that are still around, including Lord Tusk. Now for the final set of unique equipment, the armor and mask of Mirak, as well as his sword and staff. There are six variants of Mirak's mask, the one received determined by level and dominant skill in light or heavy armor. To get the best possible, you will need to be level 60 or higher, and the mask heavy or light will have a base armor rating of 27, and increase your magicka by 70. Mirak's robes, which have no armor value, absorb 15% of magicka from incoming spells and or shouts. And if you are struck while wearing these robes, there is a chance of causing a tentacle explosion, damaging your adversaries in melee range. Mirak's gloves, which are light armor giving a base of 7, increase the spell absorption that the robes have by 5%. Mirak's boots have a base armor of 11, also counted in the light category, and add another 5% 
20% spell absorption. Wearing the full set will result in a 25% spell absorption, and if coupled with the Atronach Stone and Atronach Perk from the Alteration Tree, will max out your spell absorption, basically making you absorb anything that's not a physical attack. Moving on to Mirak's weapons of choice, heavily influenced and designed by Hermaeus Mora, Mirak's sword is also a leveled weapon. At level 60 plus, the one you receive will have a base damage of 16 and absorb 15 points of stamina per strike. Mirak's staff, on the other hand, can spray writhing tentacles onto the ground, similar to a wall spell, and enemies that wander into them in most cases will stagger and take a fair amount of poison damage. To gain Mirak's outfit and weapons, you must defeat him during the final main quest in Dragonborn called At the Summit of Apocrypha. If victorious by the end, you will leave with this powerful unique set. That's it for the main list of uniques, however, if you enter Soul Simon and happen to be of the Beast Blood, there are four rings you will have access to. The Ring of Bloodlust, which increases the damage you do and damage taken in Beast Form. The Ring of Instinct, which slows time for 20 seconds after you enter Beast Form. The Ring of the Hunt, which lets you regenerate health. And the Ring of the Moon, which increases the duration of your howls by 25%. All four of these are sold by Majni, the leader of the pack in Frostmoon Crag, a fair distance west of Mirak's Temple. Each of these rings has their utility, but it may be slightly disappointing that you can't wear more than one. And so that is all for this guide. If you feel like there is something I missed, do a favor for myself and your fellow Dragonborn by stating what the item in question is and where to find it in the comments. Speaking of comments, if you found this guide useful and or interesting, do whatever it is you see fit to show that. And if you would like more content like this, you know what to do. Thank you so much for watching, this is Kato Genesis, and your next adventure awaits.